and welcome to more talks from Thomas More University. This is a virtual discussion series sponsored by C Forward, where we present short, powerful talks devoted to spreading ideas, thoughts, and information to, your, to our community. I am your host, Michael Orr, and I am very excited to introduce our speaker today, uh, Jesse Neek. Jesse is the business manager for the Heart and Vascular Institute at St. Elizabeth Healthcare. He served eight years on active duty in the US Army, including a combat deployment to Iraq in 2003, before going on to earn his BS in accounting from Northern Kentucky University in 2011 and an MBA from Thomas More University in 2020. Jesse is still very active in the veterans community. He serves currently as co-chair for the Northern Kentucky Military Veterans Coalition. He's former veterans outreach director for the Cincinnati chapter of Team RWB and recently uh, has acted as a peer mentor for the Northern Kentucky Veterans Treatment Court. Jesse also volunteers at an equine therapy farm known as New Day Ranch in Verona, Kentucky, where he is helping to develop a veterans therapy program. Jesse, we're so glad to have you here today. Uh, before you get started, I just wanna leave a couple of quick reminders for our audience today. Uh, this more talk is being recorded, so you will have the opportunity once we are finished here in the next few days uh, it, to see a recording of this. It will be available on Thomas More University's Moreover website. We will be sending a link to its location, which will be at more.thomasmore.edu after the presentation. If you find this talk engaging and thought-provoking, I encourage you to please feel free to share this with others. Also, uh, an important note, we do have a Q&A function available. So if you have questions for our presenter during the course of today's discussion, uh, please, please use that chat function uh, in the Q&A. Actually, we prefer the Q&A just because it makes it easier to monitor. So if you wanna leave a question in the Q&A, I will do my best to get uh, those to our speaker after he has finished his presentation. So uh, without further ado, uh, Jesse, we are so pleased to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us today. All right, thanks, Mike. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to my more talk. Uh, one question I get asked all the time when I'm talking to folks about veterans is how can I help? And my answer is always just be there and be supportive because there truly is not a single effort or task anyone can do to help a veteran as we each struggle individually. So I hope if you only take one thing away from today, it is that one size does not fit all. So Mike gave you a great bio uh, there for me, but who the heck am I really, and why am I talking to you today? Again, I'm Jesse Neek, and I am a TMU alumni, husband, father, son, brother, friend, and a disabled U.S. Army combat veteran. As Mike said, I fell 45 feet from a Black Hawk helicopter in 2003 uh, in northern Iraq, so needless to say, my military career ended quite differently than I expected. One thing I greatly struggled with, and almost every veteran struggles with, is that transition from military to civilian life when they separate from service. There's a song called A Soldier's Memoir by Mitch Russell, which speaks to these struggles with civilian life. And a lyric that hits the, the nail on the head for me is, they taught me how to put that uniform on, but I just can't get it off. Uh, I've been out of service for 16 years now, and sometimes still struggle with civilian life. And because of our struggles, veterans are sometimes unfairly characterized as broken outcasts. But it is quite the opposite in that veterans possess certain leadership qualities, skill sets, and coping mechanisms that are not easily taught or learned, such as leading under duress and compartmentalization, to name a few. However, once the structure of military life is gone, veterans often struggle with feelings of not being in control and helplessness. Veterans, I'd like to speak directly to you for a minute. Uh, one issue I have with our community is that many of us separate from service with the feeling that we are entitled to respect or special treatment or anything else because of our service. And we, when we perceive that we've been slighted by civilians, we withdraw. Uh, I was incredibly guilty of this and look back regretfully uh, on the way I wasted those first few years after I separated from service. Um, it took me quite some time and a lot of long miles with some amazing folks from Team RWB, Red, White, and Blue, uh, to realize that civilians, or anyone for that matter, owe us nothing for our service, save a little gratitude. We volunteered to serve, and we did so because we have a natural inclination for service. 
So I want to share with you what has helped me the most, and that is helping others. When I volunteer with the Barracks Project, thebarracksproject.org, <clears throat> excuse me, or as Mike mentioned, New Day Ranch, newdayranch.org, or with Habitat for Humanity, or any other great organization, my soul is healed, and I'm giving back 100-fold what I've given. So my challenge to you is to find that spark. Find whatever it is that fuels that fire inside you. Because when you do, you too will begin to heal. You'll start to feel that connection with your community again, your new community in this scary civilian world. And at some point, you'll stop fearing this crazy new deployment that is life after service. What you're doing when you volunteer or journal or whatever you find that sparks that spark is you're changing your perspective. And when you do, it changes how you view your current situation. Uh, for me, when I started helping build homes for others with Habitat or working in equine therapy grief camp at New Day for Kids who'd lost a family member, not only was I doing good for others, but with it came moments of reflection where I realized how much God has done in my life. Now, there are a multitude of services available to help, help transitioning service members and veterans but there are not many aggregate sites where they can all be viewed or found easily. I'm proud to say I've been affiliated with a few organizations who have done significant work to address this need. And I believe Mike and the team will be sharing links to some of those resources. Uh, I was one of the co-founders of the Student Veterans Organization at NKU, which at the time we called NKU Vets or Veterans Education and Transition Support, uh, and is now known as Norse Vets. A group of us veteran students and a veteran faculty member recognized the need for support for in incoming veteran students, and we fought to create a foundation for an organization that now has a veterans resource station on campus. Uh, the most recent organization I am a part of that has made an incredible impact in the Northern Kentucky community is the Northern Kentucky Military Veteran Coalition, NKYMVC. We really do love our acronyms in the military and veteran community. Uh, as Mike said, I'm lucky to serve as the co-chair of this group uh, with an amazing, caring, and passionate woman named Robin Pruitt, who really does the true work of a chair, and I just get to take half the credit for it. Uh, our group was an arm of the Tri-State Veterans Community Alliance, or TVCA, uh, which unfortunately this year has ceased operations. However, the core mission and members of this group remains with the goal of aggregating available resources for veterans and doing what we can for our veterans and service members in our community. A great partner and member of the NKY MVC and another great resource for veterans is Easter Seals, who provides advocacy and education, employment programs and job training, and caregiver services. Another incredible local resource in our region is the Northern Kentucky Veterans Treatment Court. Again, I, I've served as a mentor of this program, and it's just another example of a lesser known resource that is out there to help veterans. Whatever the organization may be, the one common underlying theme is to just be there for veterans. Veterans have a hard time asking for help or even accepting help when it is offered. Uh, as I have become more aware of my mental health and the total military service and the transition out of the service has had on me and my brothers and sisters in arms, my eyes have been open to the simplest concept that I frequently share, and that is that it is okay to not be okay. I'm gonna pause here for a minute and let you repeat those seven words to yourself and let them sink in. Because this conversation is not just about veterans. Mental health to me is a scarier pandemic than coronavirus. So whether you're a veteran or not, next time you feel the weight of the world pushing you down, I ask that you think of those seven words. Make them your mantra. And if that still isn't enough, call a friend or a loved one. Because guess what? That person may also be struggling at the same time 
and not be sure what to do. And for them to just be there for you in your time of need, maybe exactly what they needed. Trust me, I've been that one on the other end of the line. Now, because this is a more talk, I would like to spend a few minutes to give an overview of what Thomas More offers for veterans. One of the coolest perks, in my opinion, are the two designated parking spots for veterans in the front of the student parking lots. I can remember walking for what felt like miles to my car on late nights after class at NKU for my undergrad, after I had worked a full day before class. So a close spot to park, to me, is a great perk. As far as education benefits, TMU accepts VA educational benefits and is a yellow ribbon school. What that means is normally private schools are more expensive than public schools, but schools that participate in the yellow ribbon program agree to waive a portion of their tuition. The VA then matches the waived amount, which allows a veteran to attend a private school at little or no personal cost. And I can speak again from personal experience, but TMU truly wants to help every veteran. Michelle Vizina, I hope she's listening in, was there as a great resource whenever I needed anything. And she also introduced me to a really cool, uh, great resource on campus, which is the Veterans Lounge. Uh, and it's a space dedicated to student veterans. It's a, it's a great space with computers and a printer for use, uh, comfortable nap-worthy recliners. And my favorite feature is the world map that has push pins for veterans to mark their spots on the map where they serve. Uh, the Student Veterans Group provides an avenue for involvement in student activities and community events. Uh, also available are tutoring and counseling services, as well as health and wellness resources with access to five seasons. Each year on Veterans Day, TMU holds a celebration to acknowledge veterans in a special ceremony. And this year includes a flag ceremony and essay contest. Uh, the event this year is tomorrow. Wednesday, November 11th, Veterans Day at 1.30 p.m. at the Cape Building on Thomas More Campus. And if you do attend, you will see a familiar face there. Uh, lastly, there are a number of faculty and staff who are veterans themselves, uh, and it truly is a welcoming community for veterans. So if you're trying to decide when and where to use those educational benefits you earn through your military service, my suggestion for when is now. And my suggestion for where is Thomas More University. Go Saints. It would be remiss of me if I didn't thank all those who played a part in me being here today with you. Uh, thank you to Bailey Bundy, Michelle Vizina, Debbie Ship, Michael Orr, Taylor Walls, Jack Rodnick, Dr. Angela Crawford, and everyone who helped me, helped guide me through my MBA journey over the past few crazy years. Now, before we transition to q and A, I I wanna leave you with one key takeaway as tomorrow is Veterans Day. Be intentional about noticing a veteran hat or shirt and just say, thank you for your service and watch their demeanor change. My go-to is, hey brother, thank you for your service. And I'm gonna cheat and give you one more uh, to do based on a conversation I had uh, while driving to the National Veterans Memorial Museum this past Sunday. Uh, go to your coat closet today or tomorrow or this weekend and find that coat that you haven't worn in a few years and put it in your car. And the next time you're downtown or near somewhere where you know homeless folks congregate, just tie that coat around a tree. Okay, Mike, I'm ready for questions if you are. All right. Thank you so much, Jesse. That's, it's really wonderful having you here. And thank you for your service. Uh, thank you. So before we get started, I do want to let our audience know, uh, again, we do have Q&A available. So if you have questions uh, that you'd like to ask Jesse about the topics that we're covering today, I'd be more than happy to, to ask those. Go ahead and drop those in the line. Uh, again, super happy to, to let you guys be a part of that. Uh, and I'm already seeing some nice comments for you, Jesse. Uh, so uh, I'd like to start out just by, let me pull up my questions here. Um, so uh, interactions, uh, like you said, there, there can be uh, times where 
uh, veterans can feel separated or interactions between civilians and, and veterans. Uh, people don't necessarily know how to start conversations or, or they're trying to. Uh, what are some of the most common questions you get asked as a veteran by civilians? And uh, what about other veterans? What, are, what kind, of, kind of questions do other veterans ask as well? Sure. Yeah, great questions. Um, I think the most common questions are, number one, what can I do to help? And, and number two, how can I relate? And, uh, and I think, as I said before, my answer to both is just be there. Um, you have to remember that these are men and women who, for a significant part of their adult life before you met them, lived in a completely different world than the civilian world. Um, in the military, many parts of our daily activities are scripted or structured for us. Uh, the transition out of the service is a significant change for most. Um, it, you know, also when you, when you break down the purpose of the military to its simplest form, you get to the core of good versus bad. So when you are good and constantly training to defeat the bad, you need to dehumanize your opponent, your opponent and, and learn to suppress emotions and feelings because acting out of those emotions versus training is deadly in war. And so, so when a service member comes back out of the service, it, it's not like me going over here and flipping this switch right here. And suddenly I can feel and, and effectively use, you know, those emotions again. Right. Um, so, so that's what I'll say for, uh, for civilians who, who, uh, you know, those questions, um, for veterans, really most commonly, Veterans are looking for help and, and you know, whether it's using educational benefits, um, it, paying a house payment, paying, you know, water bill, you know, it's in, and, and veterans, again, really struggle even asking for help. It's, it's such a, um, it's, it's such a macho atmosphere in the military that, that you know, it, it's a tough transition to, to a, a new world or a new deployment. Like I, like I said earlier, it, you know, it sometimes feels like a new deployment. I, I can I can completely understand that feeling. Um, I have a couple of questions here about sort of origins of different kinds. And so um, I guess what I'd like to start a question from our Q&A section, thank you for asking. Um, what prompted you to join the military? What prompted you to serve? And then after your service, what prompted you to begin using service to others as sort of a therapeutic process? Um, so great question. I'll save you the long story because those of you that are listening that know me, I always have a story. Mike, you know, because we talked last week and I think, uh, I think I told stories the entire time. We could go on for forever. Um, <laughs> but um, long and short is that um, when I was a junior, I was dating a senior and she was joining the Air Force and she was taking this crazy test called the ASVAB and I thought, what the heck? Well, I took the ASVAB and I aced it. Um, and then didn't really think much of it um, until that summer uh, between my junior and senior year when I was working at Burger King and a couple army recruiters came in uh, and asked to speak to me and uh, I took a lunch break we sat down um, and, and talked about it and, and you know they said some really cool things that sounded like a, a lot of fun you know they said I could be an infantryman and be an airborne ranger and jump out of planes and uh, that sounded really cool to a 17 year old kid the, the furthest he'd ever been away from home was church camp in West Virginia. Um, so um, so my, my dad and, and Mike, you know this, I'll, I'll share with the group, my dad's a Vietnam veteran. Um, and I, you know, th there's, not a, uh, there's not a sense of expectation in my family for service, but there, uh, I've got quite a few uh, veterans in, in, in my family. Um, so I, you know, there's, I think that just that natural uh, leading to service. Um, so yeah, so that, that's how I got in. So that's the answer to the first one. Um, to answer the second question, again, I, 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 almost, I almost found service in, in my life after military service um, kind of by accident. Um, you know, I was um, at a previous role before I came to St. Elizabeth, I was chosen as a, as a leadership champion uh, when I worked at the EW Scripps Company. And, and there I began to learn, learn about servant leadership. Um, and my eyes were, were really open to the benefits of serving others. Um, and then I was lucky enough three years ago to be offered a role here at St. Elizabeth. Um, and within a couple months of, of starting here, 
I had helped build a home down in Covington for uh, someone with Habitat for Humanity. Um, and then I volunteered at my first uh, equine grief therapy camp down there at New Day Ranch. Um, and, and really that, that first day at New Day, that first morning, um, you know, when I was there with these kids who had lost a brother or a sister or mom or dad or, or grandparent, and, and to watch, you know, in a, in a short period of time, just in that first day, how much those kids got out of that camp. Um, it, it just, I'm, I'm getting chills talking about it, but it's just, it was amazing. It was like a light bulb going off to me, like, yeah. Like, and, and I think I, I mentioned before, many of us joined the service because, you know, we have that, that pulling to, to serve others. And, and, and so, um, you know, it, it took me, took me a lot of time wading through some dark places of depression and, and anxiety uh, and whatnot after I separated from service to, to realize that, um, man, that's just, it's an incredible benefit out there to serve others. There really is. And um, not a combat veteran myself, I can say that I, I've also had that light bulb moment where it just, you see the effects that you can have on other people and you can see the good that doing things for others can, can do for yourself. And it, it can be transformative. It really yeah. can. Agreed. Um, you had mentioned at one point that uh, you've worked uh, with other groups to create a space in which uh, you can find resources that are compiled in one place. Um, like you said, it can be difficult to find compilations of, of resources that are kind of compacted. You don't have to do a lot of work to go searching for them. So uh, we will be making those links uh, available after this talk. Thank you so much again for sharing that. I would encourage everyone that watches this uh, whether or not you currently either are active duty military or a veteran or know someone that is, even if you don't, uh, knowing where to find resources like that can be super, uh, super helpful. And, you know, it never hurts to be armed with information. So I'd really encourage you guys, uh, go check that out when you have a chance, because I think that that can be really helpful in the long run. Um, moving on to some other helpful things. Uh, once again, the Q&A is open. If people want to ask questions, uh, Jesse's great at answering them. So uh, if you have questions about... Uh, uh, interactions you've had with military veterans or resources, uh, please feel free to ask them here. Um, one of the things that you mentioned, Jesse, is your sort of your mantra, it's okay to not be okay, which in my opinion is an incredibly important message for everyone, especially veterans, but everyone. Having a mantra can be a really powerful way of talking to yourself and, and sort of shaping your life around you. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how you've experienced that or, or how you came to, to find that one that worked for you and, and why it works for you? Yeah, so um, if, if you couldn't tell already from the time you've been on here, I'm very much a type A. Um, so, so, I, you know, so I normally react on instinct um, and I sometimes overreact uh, and then regret what I've said or did. Um, and that can easily lead down a dark hole. So, when I'm able, able to take pause and, and realize I'm human and that it's okay to not be okay, I can refocus and avoid slipping into that dark spot. Um, I, I'm fairly certain many listening today have probably been in a bad place and know how lonely it can be. Uh, so again, I, I, I said before, you know, I, mental illness, Ill, illness to me is, is the worst pandemic that we've ever suffered as humans. And so what I, when we can begin to see that it really, as a, as a collective group, uh, throwing out masculinity, throwing out male, female, whatever stereotypes, when we begin to see that it really is okay to not be okay, we can start to talk about it like we're doing right now um, and, and rid ourselves of, of that loneliness that comes with that, that deep dark hole that we can get ourselves into. Um, and, and it can really be, begin to help us heal. Again, um, I can't say when I stumbled upon it is okay to not be okay. Um, it was potentially, um, you know, one of the, uh, one of the other amazing uh, veterans groups that I'm a part of, um, the Cincinnati, you know, chapter president for 22 until none. Um, it could have been a post on, you know, on Facebook from them. Um, but for me, that was, you know, that was another kind of light bulb for me is that it's like, okay, I, you know, there, there are, there are other guys that I serve with that we may make fun of each other for crying, but guess what? Crying's okay. Sometimes you, again, 
that assimilation back to a, a, a real world versus this crazy kind of place that you live during your service. Um, you know, emotions are a normal part and, you know, feel it's, it's okay to feel emotions and feel those feelings and express them instead of suppressing them. Because if you suppress them, they're eventually going to come out at some point and you're probably not going to like when or where they come out. It's very true. And uh, that, that applies to all people as well. <laughs> um, you know, that those feelings of, of isolation often, right, and it's kind of suppressing the emotions, I, that can happen in a lot of circumstances. Uh, yeah. A big one can be that uh, you don't necessarily know how to start a conversation. You don't feel, you don't feel equipped to start a conversation. And, and that can come from both sides in, in a veteran's relationship, especially inside of uh, a relationship with family or friends that are service members or veterans with civilian family or friends. Yeah. Like you said, right at the beginning, this is by no means a, a one size fits all issue. Every relationship is going to be unique. Every, every situation is going to be unique. Um, but do you have any advice for veterans or civilians about how to open up conversations like that? So I'll, I'll speak to the civilians first. And, I, and I'll say that my advice is to find a way to connect with your veteran. Um, find, find out what interests them. Find, find out what sparks that spark. Um, what they like to to do um and then those those more difficult conversations or, or topics that you want to breach when when you've got that person in a comfortable environment those those things will come organically um they definitely can't be forced because um you know i've been guilty of it myself i, I know I have friends who are guilty uh when when we're pushed we're, we're going to withdraw um, and, and so that's, that's my best advice is just let those things come organically. Um, and, and for the veterans, I'll say, we have to shed that ridiculous idea that it's, it's all fine and good when we're in and we're serving, but we have to shed the idea that we're weak when we ask for help. We need to realize that there are so many people and so many organiz organizations out there who want to help us. We just need to seek it, number one, and be willing to accept it when it's offered. Um, and we, we need to realize that the life after service is going to be different. And, and we, we need to, to do what we've done in the service, and that's adapt and overcome. You know, we, we've, we've done it before. Uh, we can do it now. And reach out, damn it, reach out. You're not alone. I know it may feel like it. I've I've been there, um, but you're not. There's there's somebody there. And and if I can go back to one thing I said earlier, um, just reach out because you reaching out to that person on the other end of the line may be exactly what they needed that day to get through whatever it was that they were dealing with. Agreed. Yeah. It, it, Relationships like that are always a two-way street and no person ever is the only one and suffering. And yeah, I think that's a great point. You never know what good you could be doing with someone else, just someone else by being the person that reaches out first. Yeah. Um, you, you just mentioned life after, you know, life after service is going to be different. There's going to be changes. Um, you've said some really wonderful things about your experience at Thomas More, and I'm so glad that you've had that experience here with us. Yeah. Um, so can you tell us a little bit just briefly about what, what did you study and then what prompted you to, to take that direction here? And then uh, what advice do you have to other veterans that are considering getting a degree? Sure. So uh, I did the accelerated MBA program um, and it was a million times better than I expected. Uh, I, I expected my life to be consumed with school because for those, those on here who don't know the accelerated MBA program is 18 months straight, pretty much, uh, with a few few breaks in there um, of six week courses. And you know, at the beginning, it sounds kind of ludicrous that you're going to study everything that that comes with with an MBA in 18 months. And how much are you going to learn about one subject in six weeks? Uh, but it's a huge credit to Dr. Crawford and the rest of her team there on how they designed the program. And I'm so thankful for them. Um, 
you know, quick story, because I know we've got one or two people on here that, so, uh, so St. Elizabeth, again, lucky enough to work for a great organization, has a great relationship with Thomas More. Um, and we actually have an MBA cohort where um, certain students are selected to, uh, to participate in the program, and that program is covered by St. Elizabeth. Um, and uh, when the opportunity came available, I guess two years ago, we'll call it, um, I applied for it, um, but hadn't re didn't realize that I didn't meet one of the, um, one of the requirements, which was three years uh, service at St. Elizabeth. So through that process, there are a couple of us that had, you know, you already go through applying at Thomas More and whatnot, and so we'd, we'd been accepted, and it was like, well, let's let's think about this. Well, you know, let's let's look at what our other our, our other options. Uh, and when we found this accelerated program online, for me that was like, yes, that fits my life perfect, because you know, with a wife who who runs a business from home and stays home with our our two uh, crazy offspring, a six year old and a three year old. Um, I had to be super flexible with my education. Um, so the online program is just amazing. So again, thanks to everyone that's involved. Uh, I, I'll say her name again because she's just been awesome to me the entire time. Michelle Vizina is great. She was, she was there every step of the way. Um, my advice to veterans, or to anyone for that matter, is don't think about it. Don't take some time, because I graduated from NKU with my bachelor's degree in May of 2011. And I was going to take a year off, and then I was going to go back and get my MBA. It took me a few more years, but just just do it, uh, and you'll be thankful once you've accomplished it. Excellent advice. <laughs> <laughs> go do it. Get your yeah. education. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I, if anyone has any final questions, I'm going to ask one last question, but I'm more than happy to grab others from the chat. Uh, before before we close out today. Once again, Jesse, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having um, me. One common issue that I've heard from veterans, uh, and that's come up a few times already, is, is feelings of isolation. Uh, it can be, can be a real thing uh, for people that have served in the military, um, or feeling separated from people around them in general. So do you have any advice for veterans that feel this way, or do you have advice for family members or close friends for someone uh, that may be feeling that way? I'll just I'll just say what I said before, and um, and I might cry this time because I almost cried saying it the, the previous time. But just reach out, like it's like there's there's somebody there. I I know, I know you feel alone, and I I know you know you, you might reach out to one person and and they might not answer right away, and and that feels like you know you're you're completely alone. You're not. There's you know there there's somebody else out there, and and there are many of us out there that have have either been where you've been or or you know we, we we know we know what you're going through and and we're we're here to help um you know there's i thanks mike to you and the group for all the research sources you're going to share um there are I, I did make notes that i wanted to share real quick um i i forget what i share with you but there's a couple uh, great facebook groups i'll um, i'll point the group to first of which is the northern kentucky military veteran coalition um, there's the Cincinnati chapter of Team RWB, Team RWB Cincinnati, or that Team RWB is, is an international organization now. So um, there's a local chapter, um, I'm, I'm sure, near you. I think there was, you know, there's a couple on bases over in uh, Afghanistan right now, which is super cool. Um, and then uh, I mentioned again, I, I'm the chapter president for 22 until none here in Cincinnati. Uh, we have a veterans only group on Facebook. Um, and, and that's just so, you know, in case veterans are uncomfortable sharing anything um, in, in front of others. So we've got that group and then we also have a friends and family. Um, so it's 22 until none uh, veterans and, and then a friends and family page. Um, and, and Mike, if, if I may, I'd like to end on this note. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this More Talk series is part of a larger Thomas More Be More campaign. Um, and I feel obliged to say this before we go. I, I said at the beginning of this that I hope you take at least one thing away from today, and that is that one size does not fit all. That's certainly true when working with veterans. However, there's one thing that fits everyone, no matter the size, and that's kindness. There's so much divisiveness in our world today, and, and it doesn't have to be that way. Uh, 
it is our responsibility to be more. We owe it to ourselves and each other. So I'll ask that you be intentional about avoiding them versus us and instead think about how we can be more and be better. And I'll leave you with two words that my late friend Katie Young believed in so much that she had them tattooed on her skin and I wear them on my badge every day. Be kind. Thank you for joining today and God bless you. Jesse, thank you so much. That uh, fantastic message to end on. I won't say much else because I want to leave it with that. But again, this has been recorded. Uh, if you want to share this message with others, if Jesse has inspired you or think could inspire others, please feel free to share this. We'll be linking to those resources as well. Thank you all so much for joining us today for more talks uh, sponsored by C Forward. And I hope we'll see you again next time. Have a great day. Thanks.